So if there's one group of people in politics I absolutely despise, it's people from think tanks, because they have undue political power, which is basically only given to them by the fact that they are essentially lackeys for political parties who want to find specific results and will get the think tanks to produce papers that bring those results to them, regardless of the methodology, regardless of whether or not this is actually a fair reflection of reality. They are essentially just political tools for political parties with highly paid people, with very, very dodgy donors who we don't know. Especially, for example, the Institute of Economic Affairs, which is one of the lowest ratings of funding transparency. Emily Carver, who is now a presenter on GB News, I wonder how she had those connections after being somebody who was a media commentator for the Institute of Economic Affairs. Somehow managed to get herself on GB News, crazy how they have those connections. She literally, on LBC, said before, we don't reveal who our donors are because otherwise they'll get attacked. Yeah, for being politically partisan people who want to try and manufacture consent for politics that helps rich people. Do you think rich people who, explicitly rich because they're good at taking money away from people, are just giving money to educational charities for the good of humanity? Or do you think they're going to get return on investment for that donation? Yeah, that's how capitalism works, friend. You, the IEA know it just as well. Anyway, Annabelle Denham is a member of the IEA and she squared up against Green Party Deputy Leader Zach Polanski on LBC earlier on this week. Let's take a watch. Why are politicians turning more hostile, uh, in their rhetoric at least, towards immigration? Well, it's because for a long time there has been a chasm between what the political class think and what the majority of the British public think. And we know this because of the Brexit vote. 17 million people, many of them driven by concerns about immigration. We know this because people have voted for successive Conservative governments, all of which have promised to bring down the net migration. It's interesting that she chooses two metrics for this. The first of which is people voting for Brexit, which of course was only a certain percentage of the people. And from there, you don't even know which of them voted for Brexit for macroeconomic reasons or for immigration reasons. And of course, Conservative governments were elected on non-majority vote percentages. So you, you can't even say that that was necessarily like a public veneration of anti-immigration politics. You could point, for example, to a poll that says very simply, out of those surveyed, do people want an increase or a decrease in immigration? And depending on how you word that policy, you get different answers. Sure, British public broadly want there to be less immigration, but that's something that's less of an issue nowadays. And of course, when you look at how these things work, media reporting on the problem of immigration can change public opinion. The tail is wagging the dog, so to speak. Most people actually more care about the NHS and with the, regards to the cost of living and polling up in the lead up to the election shows this as immigration is like fourth or third, depending on which metric that you use, in terms of people's concerns coming up to this election, rather than, you know, basic economic material conditions figure, uh, Theresa May, of course, promising to bring it down to the tens of thousands. And people, I imagine, feel very uh, disappointed and betrayed by Conservative governments for failing to deliver that. That's not to say that the British public doesn't value immigration. That's not to say that they don't understand that some immigrants are net beneficial to this country. When I worked at a think tank called the Entrepreneurs Network a few years ago, we put out a study that found that nearly half of the founders of the fastest growing businesses in this country were foreign born. Mm. They make a very important economic contribution that what has become clear in just the last few years. It's interesting that her yardstick for economic contribution is they are entrepreneurs who start businesses and not indeed normal working people who work, which is true. Like that's the biggest contribution that you get, especially as I've said before, we have a declining working age population and a glut of boomers about to retire. They will need a big working base to support them because they're one of the largest demographic cohorts in this country and the birth rate is below replacement. So the working age population is dropping every year, not going up. And so we will need to get taxed more to pay for their gilded, gilded pensions. Not very good pensions internationally, but gilded in historically in terms of the state pension in the UK specifically. And if we don't have a productive capacity to be able to support that, we can't afford it. People will have to retire later. The pension will have to be reduced or we'll have to cut from other government departments or other things of the welfare budget. Like if we don't tax the rich further as well as of course having a higher working age population, we are not going to be able to afford pensioners. This is an existential problem, the demographic aging of our society. And immigration is the way that we sort this by having normal working people contributing to our country, not fucking entrepreneurs. You know, if the metric for them being, oh, well, you are somebody who owns a business and therefore everybody else can get fucked, then no, 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 no. Actually, the real important thing about immigration is that normal immigrants work and contribute to the wealth of our civilization far more than any than the average entrepreneur does, you know, extracting other people's surplus value of their labor.
is that we do have extremely high numbers. People are worried about how sustainable that is, the impact that it's going to have on public services, on infrastructure. We have a housing crisis uh, in this country at the moment. I think people are worried that we are importing foreign workers when we have 9.25 million economically inactive people of working age in Britain today. Why can't we fill some of the... Because people like you wanted the government to take money out of the NHS. If you go to the IEA's website, they literally have an article called How to Abolish the NHS. That's your fault, Annabelle. Your think tank advised the government that the NHS shouldn't be a thing that we should be cherishing in this country. To the point at which they screwed it over through cuts throughout the George Osborne era that's now led to increased waiting lists, which means people are too sick to work. It's as simple as that. They're economically inactive, not because they're lazy. Unemployment is really low in this country. It's people who are not economically active out of zero choice of their own that's the problem. And people like you with your denigration of free healthcare are the ones who are to blame. That's your problem. And even outside of that, we probably still would have labour shortages in this country because we have a productive capacity shortage in this country, again, because of the demographic ageing problem that I mentioned before. Those um, jobs Because a lot of them are sick UK and on the NHS workers, waiting exactly. list, which well, is of course, 7 no, million I, agree. I think that's, that's all... That's and if you use the NHS, the person connected. serving you is more likely to be an immigrant than the person in front of you of the queue. So... Um, NHS aside, and I agree with you, I think we've got to fix the healthcare system. We've talked about that in order that we can get people uh, back to work. Um, but I think the other important point is that people are concerned about integration. Look at some of the behaviour that we have seen on the streets of Britain since October 7th at those pro-Palestinian marches. I think they've been it's understandable. Literally, they've been entirely peaceful. Like there's a couple of ne'er-do-wells, let's call them. But that's been like a tiny, tiny minority and much better than, say, you know, the pro-Israel protests full of far-right thugs, a lot of them. Well, I'm just going to finish my point, But there is a massacre going on in Palestine. Zach, and no one has right interrupted you at all in that's this programme. But, okay. but you <laughs> constantly interrupt others, so can you just be... Yeah, because she's talking shit. You can't let people gish gallop like this with complete nonsense that's completely fabricated. You have to cut them off. You have to get them out and say, no, 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 let's tackle this point here that you that you explicitly lied about. As I say, people are concerned about integration. They're concerned that when you have net migration well into the 600,000, that that doesn't give us every year, that doesn't give us enough time to properly help people uh, assimilate into British life and British culture. They're worried that we are importing people who don't subscribe to Western liberal values as we all do. And I think many... Them being worried is not the same as evidence. Again, the evidence shows you that people do assimilate, especially once they get into you know, second generation immigration, for example. And whilst I think that we should always take care to assimilate people, actually, broadly in the UK, we do a really good job at assimilating immigrants into our own personal culture. But of course, you know, this idea that Western liberal values are somehow specific to our country, I mean, that's just complete nonsense, right? As if liberal values are somehow explicitly a Western thing. Mm, with the Western chauvinism coming out of these people. And then again, it drips off of the right wing in this country every day people in Britain are worried that they can't even stick their heads above the parapet and say these things for fear that they'll be accused of being racist, for it fear that racist. they'll be accused of being bigots. It simply isn't it's racist bigotry to say and that, racism. There are <laughs> that there are concerns that people are not integrating into British culture and British life as well as they could be, even though, of course, immigration has enriched us. Of course, it has in many ways improved our you society. You just don't like them walking on the street proud. if they've got black or brown skin. Oh, oh. for goodness That's, sake, that is beneath If you're you. saying that, that you're walking in march, honestly. those marches have been peaceful. Do you accept those marches have been peaceful? Well, no, because people have been arrested at those marches, so they clearly but haven't been The people peaceful. being arrested. Millions of people turned up, and the people who were arrested were arrested for holding fucking signs. And one of them was calling Rishi Sunak a coconut. Jesus Christ, I thought that that sign was probably a little bit beyond the pale, right? Do I think people should be arrested for that sign? That is absolute nonsense. That's complete nonsense. What the hell? I, I did not watch. This is something I have not pre watched. I did not realise she, she was going to try and say this. That's crazy. And the fact that Ian Dale has got mad at Zach for saying that too, when she's dog whistling super hard. Or oh, they've seen the marches where people say, you know, free Palestine and from the river to the sea. Legitimate calls for the end of the occupation and for a single secular democratic state rather than an ethno state that we fund with weapons that we sell to them. Like these are two absolutely reasonable positions for people to hold. Suddenly it's hate marches. Like, Again, sure there'll be a couple of people who don't do the right thing, but that is not a representation of what's happening on the marches.
by Annabelle Denham framing, framing these marches very specifically under the fact that some people have done some bad things, like a tiny, minuscule minority, as being the reason why people are scared of the marches and why people aren't integrating, is just complete nonsense. Complete nonsense. There have been people who have gone to incite violence that and hate. That simply isn't true. Well, there are also people who are pro-Palestinian marches. We had Jew a Jewish person trying to cross the street who was told by a police officer that he couldn't because it might not be safe for him to do so. No, 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 He wasn't, wasn't stopped from crossing the street because he thought there would be an altercation. Because this guy was clearly there specifically to rile people up. He could have chosen anywhere to walk, anywhere to go. Right? They even offered him a police escort to go somewhere else and he wouldn't do it because that was a guy who was trying, deliberately trying to provoke people so he could get a reaction to be able to film with the film crew he just happened to have with him so he could use it to denigrate the pro-Palestine protesters. This is why the police were getting involved. I hate to defend the mess on anything, but to try and claim that this was evidence of the pro-Palestine march being terrible, this is complete nonsense. Gideon Falter was explicitly an agent provocateur, clearly an agent provocateur for anybody, right? Of course, this is just my opinion, right? I can't tell tell what's going on in Gideon Falter's head. This is my intuition from what I've seen there. But I think that anybody who has a different intuition is was watching a completely different clip. But then showed he'd repeatedly so tried to stir up trouble and the police had asked him to move away and he kept coming back. That would strongly indicate that the police are concerned that there is a threat to people's safety from a minority, of course, a small minority of people ah. who are protesting on the streets of London. Um, and the majority, of course, are doing so peacefully. I don't think anybody's denying that. More people that, will be arrested at Glastonbury. It doesn't mean that people up and down Britain aren't watching the scenes and feeling worried that multicultural... Oh, whose fault is it for generating the narrative that this was something they couldn't coexist with? Or could it be the Western chauvinist Zionists who were the ones who happened to disseminate information because the people who believe in this ideology are members of our press, are members of the think tanks, are members of our political class who support Western chauvinist pol political policy, who support a Western chauvinist view of the world, who want to tell you you cannot coexist with brown people who believe that the occupation of the Palestinians in a settler colonial entity, an ethnostate no less, is a bad thing. That is a problem of our political class. It's a problem of our journalists. It's a problem of the think tank wankers like you who are trying to make people think that that's the case when it clearly is not the case. It clearly hasn't been the case because you admit that the marches have broadly been peaceful. It's the narrative that's the problem and it's a narrative, a racist narrative no less, that people like you help stir up to try and denigrate those who stand against things like Zionism. It's as simple as that. Socialism has failed in this country in some way. People are worried, but that doesn't mean that those marches aren't peaceful. But it also They're doesn't mean things. that you should accuse a fellow member of this panel of being racist, which is what you just did. I think when something... I mean, they said racist things, I'll call them fucking racist, mate. Tough shit. Things racist, Do you want to withdraw it? To no, withdraw I think it? if someone says something racist, then it should be called out. Now, I realise that's difficult and it feels uncomfortable to say that. I don't know you. But I think when people step over well, a line, then it's important we call I that out. I think when you listen back to this, you'll think that you've stepped over a line. Okay, and I, I think you have. If you enjoyed the video, make sure that you like and leave a comment that helps the video out in the algorithm. If you subscribe and ring the bell, it'll let you know when I go live. I stream every day on YouTube and Twitch. You can also follow all of my socials down in the description. And if you want to support me in a more financial manner, you there's a join join button for memberships is just 99p so be a member on youtube as well as a patron and there's some merch there as well and hopefully i'll catch you on the next video take care